Hey everybody, today I am going to explain to you one of my favorite things about brewing at Sonder. And sometimes it's the little things. There's not necessarily a little thing. I think it's very much a big thing. We have a sterilization loop here at Sonder. And to me, it's just super exciting. It changes the game from a sanitation standpoint, from a sterilization standpoint, of what you can know is actually going on with your equipment. Again, this is kind of a Cadillac version of something, right? This is not like necessarily super inexpensive, but we'll talk about some options of what you might be able to do with this on a different scale, or potentially uh, if you're in a smaller brewery than this on a little bit more of a budget. But anyways, let's talk about the sterilization loop. So. Over here, over my shoulder, I have woo, a really tall tank over there. The tall tank over on this side is our hot liquor tank. And there are actually two portions to it. There is a portion that is our sterilization loop and then just a general hot liquor tank, uh, general use uh, water source, okay? But if you have not watched my video on how we CIP here, where we talk about our CIP loop. You're really going to want to check that out because this is really the end of that whole CIP section for a lot of different things that we do here at the brewery. Typically what I've done in the past is I will put uh, a tank, a transfer line, anything like that through caustic acid and then parasitic acid. And then I have to purge out that parasitic acid as I move product from place to place, right? That's the whole idea. But what we can do here at Sonder, which is, I believe, very unique, is we have a sterilization loop. So we have this HLT that is specifically set aside to circulate 85 degree C water just in a loop, all right? There's one source right here. And I think just out of frame over, oh, no, you can kind of see, just out of frame over here, we have another. The whole key to this is this line right here and this line right here is the loop, okay? And let me double check my direction. My direction is actually going this way. So the water in this pipe below is going here and then it's returning here. What we have is we have two valves, three valves, right here. So what that en enables us to do is say I just wanted to take a transfer line and sanitize it. All right. You would put your appropriate, whatever valve, sight glass block on there, block and bleed, whatever on there that you need. And so you would connect to here, loop, connect to here. You can open both of these valves. And then typically what we'll do is we'll close this valve, meaning that all the water is being forced through and on and to complete the loop. The interesting thing about this is one, you can sterilize. You can also save on putting chemical down the drain and it's actually superior to running that chemical, right? So when I am getting ready to harvest yeast, when I am getting ready to prep a brink uh, with an adjunct in it or something like that for circulation with another tank, I can completely burn out or sterilize that entire rig. When I go to yeast harvest, I can put my whole yeast rig through CIP and then full through a full sterilization loop. We'll put something on there for 30 minutes and just let it run through. Now, the cool thing is, is when we do a block and bleed scenario, and when I say block and bleed, uh, this is what I'm talking about. You have a line, I'm wrestling with it a little bit. You have a line here with the sight glass a valve that will be going to the tank and then a side valve that we can actually dump beer out the side. You can see right now there's a sample port on there. There's a reason for that. When we're sterilizing our lines, we'll both open that side that has the sample valve on it. We'll open that valve and then we'll tweak it open. And so that'll allow the hot water to bleed through there as well, right? The whole idea is when you're using chemical, to sanitize, you need contact time, 
turbulence helps, all those things, right? With this, you can actually get, when you sterilize something at a high temperature, what you really need is, yeah, you, you want flow through there to maintain your temperature because you're cooling through your loop and then you're getting reheated back at your tank, right? But we have a situation where that heat is creeping all the way through the hosing, all the fittings, everything like that, and sterilizing that all the way through. Something that's very cool. Now, what we do is, while we're doing this, we do keep an eye on the temperature of the sterilization tank water source. And we do also use little welder crans. And what we'll do is, both on the in and the out of the item that we're sanitizing, we're gonna make sure that that crayon is melting on that surface, okay? Again, a little bit of a Cadillac item to have in, in, in a brewery, but I think there's options. Even if you're in a smaller situation, you might be able to have a smaller HLT type build, a vessel that's insulated. Maybe you can, uh, maybe you can back rig a bright beer tank, something that's insulated with an electrical line or, or with, uh, Maybe you, can, maybe you can outfit it with uh, a heating coil, something like that. If you're already on steam, you could tap that into steam as well. And you could set up a, a rudimentary loop. You would need a pump for it, okay? But you wouldn't necessarily have to have tons of process piping. You could build it out differently uh, with hoses, um, different things like that, maybe smaller manifolds to try to create a situation where, where you're replicating this. It's a unique thing if you're doing yeast handling, if you're sending beer out the back door. Micro should be something that is of top concern for all of us, but especially the more beer you're making and the further away that beer is going, the more we need to be prioritizing these things. This is something interesting that we use here at Sonder. There might be some things that you could rig to actually make and work for you in your spot as well. Anyhow, if you have any questions about what we've been talking about, as always, drop them in the comments below. This is where I get a lot of my questions for my live stream Q&A. Um, so always drop questions down there. I'll answer them. And I appreciate you joining me today. Hope you have a great day. Bye. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you feel as if you got any value out of the video, please like and subscribe. There are also other videos that you can watch. They're going to maybe be over here or over here. Appreciate you watching. Thank <laughs> you.